So welcome to the Develop Your Academic CV session with Walden Kerr Services. I'm Denise Pranke, a Senior Kerr Services Advisor at Walden University. And the Kerr Services Center team is located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And our center aspires to be a cutting edge global career services center, preparing Walden students and alumni to navigate career transition over a lifetime. So to achieve this vision, we educate, coach, and advise on strategies to help you proactively manage your career. And so our agenda for the session will be to explore the CV resources available for you on the Kerr Services Center website, differentiate a CV from a resume, like what is the difference between the two, and discuss the main CV sections and some formatting tips, and share ways to strengthen your document. Um, and then the remainder of the time will be spent answering your questions about developing your CV. But I am going to pause periodically during the presentation to address questions as well. We won't save all of the questions until um, the end. So next, I would like to know where you are at in the CV process. Um, so please use the question feature on your um, GoToWebinar control panel um, to let me know, for example, um, are you updating or improving your current CV? Are you creating your very first CV? Or are you simply unsure of, well, what is a CV? Do I even need a CV? So take a, a minute and use the question feature to let me know where you're at. Okay, so a lot of you are in the process. You want to update it. You want to strengthen it. Okay, and some of you have a resume and you want to transition, change that resume into a, a CV. So use, using a resume as a starting point. Okay, and a question came up. Um, where is the closed captioning? It is should be in the um, chat feature here. So let's, let's see. Let me get that. Okay. And uh, let's see, any other questions? So most of you are in the process of updating a few. This is your first, your first CV. So great. And we have a lot of uh, resources to help you uh, as you move forward in terms of, of creating your CV. Great, well, thank you for, for sharing that. That will help me as we go, go through. So next, we're gonna take a, a brief look at some of the resources that we have on the Career Services website, which you can access from your My Walden portal or by going directly to careercenter.waldenu.edu. Our doctoral resources and CV tools can be found on the horizontal navigation bar under the resources and resumes and CVs tab as well. So we're gonna look uh, more closely at a few of these resources in the next few slides. So under the resources tab on the horizontal navigation bar, you'll find a section that says doctoral resources. And this is your one-stop resource with links to a Curriculum Vita um, guide. It also has a link to the optimal resume CV samples. It has a link to our archive doctoral webinar series recordings and some networking sites as well for academics and researchers that sometimes also list jobs on those sites as well. So the Curriculum Vita Guide is an excellent resource uh, to take a look at in terms of, you know, after this session, and you want to uh, go back and review some of what we've talked about here. Uh, it, the guide will, has a number of different areas that you can take a look at. And we also, in the optimal resume system on the Kerr Services website, we have some 
uh, CV samples. And you can take a look at those samples. You can go into the system and click on the, the green resume builder. And then in the categories, you can click on um, curriculum vita and you'll see the samples. If you look at um, the samples and you think, wow, I really like this format. I would just like to use this as a template. You can create a free account in the optimal resume system. And then you can use one of the samples as a template where you would just um, put in your own information into the, into the template. But to do that, you have to create a free account and use your Walden email address when you're creating that account. If you're an alum and it's been a while since you've used your Walden email address and you no longer remember it, just send an email to career services at WaldenU. Dot edu. And I'm going to show you that email address again. Um, so you'll be able to um, you'll be able to uh, send a, an email for some help if you need some assistance with that. And so there are over uh, 400 sample resumes in this system as well. And then there are also sample CVs. So definitely use use these resources. And then we also have a series of archived webinars. Um, for example, one is on creating your CV, building your professional brand, crafting, craft your career plan, and then that doctoral webinar series that I also mentioned. And here's the list of archive webinars in the doctoral series. So you can see there um, is one on creating your curriculum vita, strategies for getting published because on your um, on your CV there will be a section that um, you can include in terms of, of publications so and then the scoop on hiring hire, in higher ed so often uh, students want to have a CV, CV because they're interested in searching for that higher ed teaching position and so next, some of you might be wondering like, well, what is a CV and how does, how does it uh, differ from a resume? So let's take a look and, and talk about that for a minute. The CV is a biographical description of your education and work background. It places more emphasis on your academic experience and professional development activities than a resume. A resume is typically one to two pages, whereas a CV can be longer in length, sometimes up to five to eight pages, depending on your level of experience. And the CV is used, um, should be the document you use if you're searching for a higher education teaching position, or if you're looking for a research position or maybe a higher education leadership position, such as a dean's position, you want to use a CV. So typically, doctoral students should have both a resume and a CV. Um, some master's degree students are also interested in higher ed teaching, so you would also want to have a CV for that um, search as well. So let me just quickly check and see if we have any questions about the difference between the two documents. Okay. Not yet. Well, if you have a question as we move forward, just let me know. Okay, so the main components of a CV are in many ways similar to a resume, but there are a few differences. So again, you you know, at the top you want your contact information. And then uh, a summary of your qualifications, your education, experience, activities, achievements, skills, and references if requested. Notice that the education section is near the top of the document, not at the end as is typical on a resume. Um, before we break down each of those sections, let's review some general formatting tips. So you want to use a consistent font size, 11 to 12 point for the content, 14 to 18 point font for your name. You definitely want your name to stand out 
at the top and then use bold underlining italics and bullet points, but use these judicious and consistently. Don't overuse them. For example, don't bold and underline and italicize something. And then use appropriate margins of about 0.7 to 1 inch. Stay positive and focus on your strengths and your accomplishments and your achievements. And then double and triple check your spelling. Use spell check and review your document thoroughly before sending. If you use the optimal resume system for your document, there's a little um, button you have to click on to do a spell check. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't automatically do that spell check. You have to ask the system to do it. And so now let's go through the sections of the CV. And then I'm going to pause after each, each section for you to um, take some time to answer your questions. So, but before we do that, let me see if we have any questions. Um, so can a CV be used for a researcher position in a, a yes. Yes, for research positions, um, I, would I would say use a, a CV format for those type of positions. And will this PowerPoint be available on the Career Services website? Yes approximately a week after this will be uh, available. And then should you list your industry job descriptions in a CV as you would in a resume? Yes, absolutely, and we're gonna walk through those sections. So great, great questions, thank you. So the contact information at the top um, is your header, and this section should include your name, of course, your highest degree credential earned, not your degree uh, if, you're, if you haven't earned it yet, your mailing address, your phone number, and a professional email address. You can also include a link to your LinkedIn profile or a career po profile in this section as well. If you're posting your document out on, a, let's say, a job search board, you might not want to put your actual street address, but put your city, state. If you're an international student, put your city, your country. Any questions on the header? OK, not yet. Oh, let's see. Should contact information be single spaced? Um, I would typically say yes. You don't want to have it double spaced. It would just take up too much room. You can see that um, example here is um, single spaced. There's some different formats. It's not necessarily one way is right and one way is wrong, but you don't want to have it all double spaced. It will just take up too much inf um, too much space if you do that. And then some information about your contact information in terms of your credentials. If you are a doctoral student, you may have some questions about how to list your credentials. So here are two important guidelines. You only, again, want to list the academic credential that you've earned after your name. Also, you should not use amended forms of a degree, for example, um, PhD with a dash and a C for uh, candidate. <clears throat> so you don't want to indicate partial completion of your program, um, nor should you use ABD, which stands for all but dissertation. These designations are not accepted credentials. So you only want to put after your name those credentials that you've earned. And you would want to keep it relevant to your job search. So if you have a credential that's not relevant, uh, you would not want to include it. Um, so again, just your highest degree earned. And there's more information on the Career Services website under the Resources tab in the Doctoral Resources about how to list your credentials. So next, the next session section should be a summary of your qualifications. 
And you here you want to stand out for other from others by highlighting your professional brand. And you want to keep this relevant to your job target. So sum up your greatest skills and strengths as related to that position that you're applying for. So you want to focus on uh, achievements and accomplishments. You want to keep this fairly short. You can see here there are three bullet points. Um, you can use bullet points or you might want to have a short paragraph of maybe three to five sentences. And you want to incorporate key words in your industry. So those that's important. If you're applying for a posted job, there might be an automatic tracking system where your document uh, there's an automatic system that looks for keywords and screens out documents that don't have those keywords. So where you have a match in terms of your qualifications, you want to use those keywords in your summary. So you can see here, she states educator, teacher, and mentor with over 10 years of teaching experience in adult continuing education and K through 12 environments. And then she goes on, designed and delivered lesson plans for classrooms of 10 to 70 participants. And you can see that she quantifies where appropriate as well. And then as educational leader, delivered to state conference presentation and manage a blog on diversity in higher education. So it's it's this very concise summary, but it's it's focused on the qualifications for the position that she wants. So let me just check and see if we have any questions here. Um, the, a question came up, will this section also include a teaching philosophy? Um, no, sometimes you'll be asked for a, a teaching philosophy statement. That typically would be a separate document. You might want to put just a statement about, you know, one sentence, maybe two about who you are as an educator or something about your teaching philosophy. But generally, if you're asked for a teaching philosophy statement, that would be longer, possibly a one page document. A question also about the credentials. Do you list both your PhD and your MA? Um, typically, um, no, you would just list your highest degree earned. But let's say you're, um, you're, you, you have a DBA and also a, a, you have a CPA. So you would list your DBA first behind your name and then your, your CPA. Um, so if that's very, if that's relevant to your job target. Um, So I finished my degree in a question. I finished my degree in December 2017. However, Walden status still shows my degree in progress. Um, you, what I would do is is check with your academic advisor. You want to list that behind your name after you receive uh, the uh, validation from the registrar's office that your your degree has been conferred. That's when you, you know, after the registrar's office does an audit and you should receive notification that you um, and then you can put that degree behind your name. And the, the reason is if you're applying for higher education teaching positions and they're definitely going to vet you, they will contact Walden and ask if your degree has been earned. So you want to make sure that it is, uh, you know, the information that is provided by Walden will match what you have on your document. So, um, and, you know, check with your academic advisor if you think anything is delayed. Um, so I would advise you to, to do that. And then as soon as you get that email from the registrar's office, immediately go to your document and put that credential behind your name. And also give yourself a big pat on the back for, for all that hard work as well. Okay, so let's um, move forward. Um, so next is going to be your education section. And here you want to list your degrees in reverse chronological order. Bold your degrees for emphasis. And so you can see here the degree title is first and the 
um, institution is second. You might look at other examples. There isn't necessarily a right or wrong way with this, but when you're applying for that job, what's important is you want to showcase your degree titles um, so they can see those very quickly. You want to place your graduation years on the right side. If you're currently in a program, you can list that degree. And then, um, as you can see here, uh, she put expected, so 2018. So now we're in the year 2018, so I would advise her to put, like, expected August 2018 or expected, you know, what, what month. And then a question came, do you include your specialization within the program? Yes, if it's relevant, I would definitely include your specialization. And so most of you, uh, you know, that, that would be appropriate to include your specialization. And then if you um, want to list your dissertation topic in this section, list it only after it has been formally approved by your committee or the chief academic officer. Um, if you're currently in your program and you you don't, you know, that title's not approved, you might want to list it in a separate research interest section um, where you can highlight your research interest areas. And you can also include information about your research plans in your cover letter when applying for teaching or research positions as well. So next, let's take a look at the experience section. So choose a title for this section, which relates to the information in it. So you can see here that um, she included, she put the title teaching experience because she has some teaching experience. So she titled it, if you don't have any teaching experience, then you can just say professional experience or, uh, or experience. And then for each um, specific position, be sure to include your title the employer, the employer city and state, and the dates of employment. And then you also want to develop a strong uh, uh, set of bullet points under that position and use what we call the CAR format, where it includes a challenge, action, and result. You want to start with strong action verbs and provide some specific details. And again, focus on achievements and results and quantify when um, possible. So you can see here, um, she has uh, teach face-to-face -face adult continuing education courses to diverse learners. Course topics include GED preparation and basic adult education, received average course evaluation scores of 3.9 out of 4.0. So it's a bit more in, in depth. Let's see if we have any questions. So um, a question, how uh how can you enhance your CV if you don't have prior teaching experience? You know, then you would want to put on your CV that you have, uh, you know, more about your research interests. And maybe you've done some informal mentoring. Um, if you've done workshops, if you pro have provided workshops in your place of employment, um, you know, that would be something to focus on. And question, if um, I'm working on my dissertation, but I don't know the expected date, how is that recorded? You know, typically it's about 18 months for the dissertation. So again, what you're stating here is that your degree, you know, when you expect it. And you can uh, change that as you get closer to the, the date. Another question um, is the special back about the about the education section is the specialization bolded. Um, yeah, I I would suggest bolding it. It's not uh, to match the the degree the, your degree title. Another question: um, How is 
how is this different from a resume? I thought the CV was more of a letter format. It is, it is very similar to a resume, but the order is different. And you'll see that there are some additional sections that typically would not be on a resume. But the CV um, would not be in a, a a letter format, it, the, if it's in a letter format, it's going to be very difficult for the reader to navigate through the document. In addition to your CV, though, if when you're applying for a position, you want to include a cover letter. So another question, you mentioned not using ABD or candidacy, but just showed inclusion of an expected graduation date. So what is the difference between those? So ABD is um, sometimes used uh, in certain cir circumstances where someone has maybe passed a series of exams. Walden does not recognize that ABD status. So you might have a friend in another program at another institution where they do have a more formal ABD status. But ABD is not a credential that would go behind your name. So the difference is when we were talking about the ABD, that was a credential that sometimes you'll see um, people put behind your name. But it, it's, it, let me take that back. ABD is not a credential, but sometimes you'll see people put it behind their name. And what we're saying is because it is not a credential, it should not go behind your name in your header. But then we also talked about the education section. So in the education section, you can list your current program with an expected graduation um, date. And again, you don't have to be real specific about that ex that date. Like say you're going to your expected graduation is um, 2019. You can simply say expected 2019. So I hope that clarifies that. Um, a question should we be listing teaching experience even if it's older from 2011 to 2012? Yes, you could. Typically, this document should go back about um, 10 to 15 years. And depending on that experience, uh, you know, that, that might be, uh, you, you might want to make a, a call on that whether you want to highlight it or not at the top. But definitely include it in the document. Um, another question, I have uh, um, had many different positions within the same company. Um, should I detail each, each one in each uh, country? So what you, if you've held a number of positions for one organization, you might want to list that organization's name and then indent like a half an inch and list the different um, positions that you've held for that that company. If you've done a lot of the same things in different places, I wouldn't, like the question is in many different countries, you don't need to list each country and what you did for each country. So would you include all the courses taught in the teaching experience? Um, yes, you could. You could have a definitely a list of the courses taught. So I'm an adult teacher at the church I attend. How would I add that experience under my teaching experience? If you're employed in that position um, and you're getting paid for that, it would be you would list it just like you see here on the example. If it's a volunteer experience, then you would put volunteer and you would want to make sure that the reader knows very clearly that that is a volunteer position. So a question, is the CV a document that can be used for non-teaching, non-educational positions? Um, typically, in that case, you'd want to use a resume. So if you're applying for, let's say, a business position or a K-12 through teaching position, for example, you would want to use a resume format that would be two pages at the most because those employers are not going to want typically the longer document. Um, but sometimes it, it can be, you know, very similar. Maybe your CV is going to be really short and it's going to be two pages. In that case, it's not going to make a big difference whether you use the resume or the CV. And for some of you, 
um, you might want to have a resume with the education near the top because you're making a major career change. And so in that case, you, you might want to have a resume with the education at or near the top. But for the CV, that education section has to be at or near the top. So let's, um, it, I, looks like I have all the questions. If I missed your question, you know, go ahead and, and just put it in again. Oops. So next we want to take a look at some additional sections that you could have on your CV. And these might be particular to you. So you want to take inventory of your experiences and skills to determine what additional sections to include. Um, you may have experience presenting and want to highlight or maybe uh, highlight that experience. Um, so you might want to have a section that's shown here, workshops delivered. And you want to make sure that um, instead of just workshops, you can see this person put workshops delivered so it's really clear to the reader that she was the person delivering them and not attending them. Conference presentations, and you want to format those according to APA. And then publications. If you have any um, publications, uh, you want to include that section as well. And if you don't have any, then don't include the section at all. So just don't put it on here, on your document, but think about, you know, in the future, um, what would be, uh, you know, that uh, what would be necessary for you to start looking into, into publishing. And we have some information on the Career Services website. We have a archived webinar in the doctoral webinar series on um, how to get published. And so again, these sections might vary depending on your um, experience. Also, if you teach other languages, um, or you're, you're, uh, if you're, if you're multilingual, you know, include a section maybe on the languages that you have. So here's a section. A uh, slide on additional sections that you might want to consider. Community engagement or community service is really important as well. Conferences attended. Maybe you've served on committees um, and grants. I know some of you might have um, submitted grants that you've received. Um, any special projects that you've worked on that um, you might want to highlight. Any international experience. You know, think about what is relevant to the position that you're applying for. Um, professional affiliations, professional memberships. So let me see if we have any um, questions here. Can scholarly coursework be listed that has not been published? Um, I would, you might want to listed under projects, but not under publications. So you might want to have a section that's called major academic projects, and then you could list it there. If you've completed your doctoral degree, does it make sense to list relevant coursework? You know, that might depend on your job target. So maybe you're applying for a higher education teaching position and you want to showcase that you've completed doctoral level work on that specific topic. So in that case, it, it might uh, make sense to include it. So it, it would, you know, the answer to that would be it depends. Um, question, should we change our CV with each position we apply for? Um, and again, that depends. If you're um, applying for similar positions, you're likely not uh, to make changes. But you always want to look at your document and look at the job description and, and make sure that you're not missing an opportunity to highlight some experience or work that you've done that's a good fit for that position. So can we list our completed dissertation as a publication once it's made um, public? Um, 
that publication section should be uh, publications typically in peer-reviewed journals. What I would do is list it in your education section under your doctoral degree, is listed there. If you, uh, and many uh, doctoral students will do this, they'll, they'll take uh, some of their research from their dis dissertation and publish it in a peer-reviewed um, journal. So if that's the case, then definitely you would want to include that publication. But for your dissertation, um, once you're finished, I would uh, suggest including the, the title on, in your education section. Okay, let's... Um, next, in terms of references, uh, you want to be able to provide a list of references if requested. And you want three to five professional or academic references. And you want to make sure that you've asked permission uh, to be of uh, the person that you're using. So let them know that you're going to be applying for uh, jobs or, and let them know what, what type of positions you're applying for and ask their permission to use them. And if uh, if some um, posted positions will say, please include references, in that case, you want to include them. If they um, don't ask, then have them on a separate document available to provide if requested. And any questions about references? Um, Oh, a question about the dissertation topic. Should you also include a brief summary of what the dissertation in, entails? What I would suggest is doing that in your cover letter. Um, you could, though, have a section of research interests on your CV where you might give a brief description, but you want to keep it um, fairly, fairly brief if you do that. Um, so um, a question, where would you place articles that were published online for an educational institute's blog? Um, what I would put then is have a section as um, popular media uh, publications and, and then include that blog post. So you would just title it instead of just publications, you um, would, t you know, label it popular media publications or media publications. Okay. And so a few, just reviewing a few uh, customization tips. As we start to wrap up, you want to tailor your document towards your job target. So you always want to look at that job description and make sure you're not missing any opportunity to highlight your um, skills and, and what you have to offer. Include a summary section at the top to further highlight what is unique about you and what you have to offer and keep it relevant to the position. Um, in your bullet points under your uh, positions, you want to use what we call car statements, a challenge action result, um, if possible, and quantify also if possible. Keep those um, uh, bullets focused on accomplishments and achievements for the most part. And so next, let's pause again and see if we have any other questions. Okay, and I, I want to um, let everyone know I really appreciate your questions during the session. It really helps the, make the session more engaging and um, tailored to what you uh, ha would like to know.
Okay, as we start um, to wrap up, I want to let um, you know as well, both um, Walden students and alumni, if you would like to go over your CV with a career services advisor, you can make a one-on-one -on -one appointment with an advisor. So the information on how to do that is on the career services website. You can click on that schedule uh, appointment button on the left and there will be information there on how to go about doing that. If you are an alum and you no longer um, have access to the scheduling system, uh, you'll send an, an email to careerservices at mail.waldenu.edu and we will help you schedule that appointment. So again, as career services advisors, we work with both Walden students at any point in their program and Walden alumni any, at any point after graduation. And so it's really helpful to go through the CV one-on-one. -on -one. Those appointments are about 45 minutes long, and that's where we can really ask you about your goals and look at your document and see how are you tailoring it to to that, that goal. And I know the question came up previously, like, well, what if I don't have any teaching experience? So we can look at some things maybe from your past that you might be able to highlight, such as, you know, have you um, provided or delivered any workshops? Um, maybe look at some volunteer opportunities where you give presentations as well, so you can showcase those. So we can, we can look at your circumstances individually and provide some feedback and some suggestions as well. And then next, um, remember, you uh, we invite you to connect with us by joining the Career Services LinkedIn group. Follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can join us on Facebook. And you can read Walden Career Success Stories on our blog. And you can use, you know, again, the features on the Optimal Resume system. And also remember, you can access all of the resources on our website at Career Center dot waldenu dot edu and again here you'll see our email address career services at mail dot waldenu dot edu